We return to West Kelowna's Quailsgate Winery to chronicle the Stewart family's decision to embrace the tenets of sustainable wine growing. It's a decision fueled by changing climate and consumer demands and demonstrated in a replanting of parts of one of the oldest vineyards and in the creation of more intimate wine and food experiences in the vineyard. We begin with Quailsgate senior viticulturalist Ed Tonner, who explains what it takes to be certified sustainable under the Voluntary Sustainable Wine Growing British Columbia Standards. So before we got certified, we had to do a, an internal audit of everything to do with our farm program, uh, from irrigation, spraying, uh, social etiquette, and it took upwards to a year to get certified and the certification came into Quailsgate uh, in January of this year. So for wine drinkers who may not know, what, what are the pillars of sustainability? We're becoming a little bit more efficient with what we're doing. And that's the idea. And you get better and better every year by having everything has a metric, everything is being measured. Specifically, how you're managing your water, what you're putting back into the lake, how you're amending your soil, how you're actually treating your neighbors and your staff is a big one as well. We want to keep everybody happy. One of the biggest stories in agriculture today is water, and it is a critical component of sustainability. From erosion and runoff concerns to its overall conservation as a scarce resource, Ed explains Quailsgate's plan to monitor and reduce its use of water moving forward. We have the ability to control all of our rates out in the vineyard now. Uh, each individual valve is hooked up to a satellite, believe it or not. And with my phone, I can actually turn on a valve or I can turn off a valve. We pair that up with our soil sensors that gives us an actual reading of how much water is in the soil and we can water to that. The ability to have that information and that data that quick is uh, unbelievable in terms of quality, how we want to farm, and for our efficiencies. And what we've noticed here is the extremes are more prevalent. Sustainability gives us a little bit more time to prepare for these events. Although not precisely one of the pillars of sustainability, vineyard renewal using information gathered over the years has helped to reset the property with vines that will live longer and be more productive, contributing to the overall health of the property. When that planting was initially done back in 1981, we had just kind of leveled the hills and so the soils weren't very consistent. So we did quite a bit of work to the site before we planted um, to uh, repair areas that needed more organic matter. We brought in a lot of compost and got the soils built up a bit more so that there's a more unified top layer. It's important, I mean, you grew up here the, to protect the lake. Well, especially when you've got the slope we've got on this site. So we're yeah. always looking at erosion and how to mitigate that. Getting cover crops started early, yeah. uh, getting a lot of organic matter into the soil so that it can retain the moisture. We're going higher density. One of the natural blessings of the Okanagan is its sloping vineyard land, think excellent drainage for cold air and water, but containing the runoff from the lake is a critical challenge for all growers. Being urban farmers here in West Kelowna, we always have to think about where the water ends up. And what we've done is allocated about 15 to 20 percent of our actual agricultural land and we've created a natural buffer zone. Um, it's amazing because it actually acts as a natural filtration before that water inevitably hits Lake Okanagan, which everything always does. Perhaps the best news is that pesticides and herbicides are on their way out. I think the new normal for us and for the Okanagan moving forward is herbicides, they're coming to an end. Yeah. They don't benefit our soils yeah. and they don't benefit actually the flavors in the wine. It's amazing how overnight you can actually see a difference in concentration in that actual grape without the use of synthetic herbicides. Sustainability comes with many ways and means to achieve its goal, but in the end, it's the people who will be responsible for its success and securing the land for future generations to enjoy. The big thing is relationships um, with the people that you're farming with and relationships that we have in and around the area. There's a lot of development going on, specifically above us, as opposed to them burning their wood chips after clear cutting, getting ready for development. We're using the mulch and we're using the wood chip to act as a uh, a buffer on our headlands and this mitigates any erosion that you might get after a large wet spring which we had this year. You're making the wine, how does sustainability fit into what you're doing? As a winemaker we are always trying to do less and um, really let the terroir speak for itself. As we move away from 
chemicals and we start doing less in the vineyard, you're going to see more of a true expression. I mean, we're already experimenting with wild ferments, and I think that as we go forward, um, the, the wild ferments in combination with um, a simple approach in the vineyard is really going to give you a really pure expression. You're well known for Pinot Noir here. Uh, you have a new planting that we've been looking at. Are you looking forward to that coming on stream? It's going to be our first planting of Pinot Noir on this lower portion. So it's going to be interesting to see this new little micro terroir section. Um, it's also a new clone for the estate. The 114 clone, tasting it from other vineyards that we've worked with it, it's quite a fruit forward um, component to our Pinot. So that will be a nice um, contrast to the 115, which has a little bit more of a savory element to it. And I know that it's an old lake bed. The soils are denser, they're heavier. How will, how will the Pinot react to that, do you think, in the glass? Yeah, so there is quite a bit of clay content down there. I think what you're going to see is a very structured Pinot um, with a lot of minerality. The next level is, is the winery, the restaurant. Will it be easy or hard to move that into the sustainable world as well? For so long, the restaurant's been kind of leading the charge because we were one of the founding members up here for OceanWise. We got involved in uh, Green Step and uh, Green Table to you know, reduce our waste and uh, carbon footprint. But uh, the winery now is looking at a lot of innovations that uh, will allow the winery to uh, modernize and become more efficient in some of its process as well as the number one thing, improving quality. The changes are they're quite widespread now in the entire business. It's a new phase of the wine business. I, I know that you and I both can look back to a time when you started and it was like this is how the wine business operates. Don't <laughs> deviate from these rules. And now we're seeing that consumers are demanding a different type of experience. Uh, that the uh, people that are coming to dine are really excited about getting out and doing the vineyard dinner. Yeah. Um, and we're also seeing that people want to learn more but be actually out in the vineyard. So yeah. we've had to modify the layout here on site in order to accommodate that. This is one of the most beautiful places I think you'll ever see in Canada, let alone North America. It's important for us to preserve this so our future generation has the ability to look at what we're looking at. Preserving the land for future use is the soul of sustainability. Three generations in, the Stewart family found themselves at a crossroad and chose to act. There's plenty of room for the rest of us to make the same journey.